Joe, the first time that the Red River blowout, I mean, excuse me, shootout, is coming to the SEC, Texas versus Oklahoma. Listen, there are a lot of people that believe that Oklahoma has no chance in this game to beat Texas. They also thought that last year, and look, it's a completely different situation going into this one, in my humble opinion, but when you look at Texas versus Oklahoma and the Cotton Bowl, what do you think? So, first of all, uh, last year I was one of the few people that gave Oklahoma a chance to win it. That's not the case this year. That's not going to happen. Look, there there are a lot of issues, and I, I'm before any Oklahoma fans think I'm just like ganging up on you and we're beating up on you guys. We said this in the preseason. If this is a seven and five year in a, in a what is basically a rebuild, your first year in the SEC with a brutal schedule, it's not a bad season. If you lose by two plus scores to Texas this year, it's not reflective of the future of your program. You need to recruit better at offensive line. And on that note, I think that where the biggest separation point here is, Blake, is that this Oklahoma offensive line has not been good in that Texas front has been extremely dominant. They kicked ass against what is a pretty steady and typically well-coached Michigan offensive line. We know what they can be. Colin Simmons is playing great as a freshman. Yep. Trey Moore has been a quality player. They are deep like the Tennessee defensive line that we have hyped up a ton. I think that that is where things are going to get potentially ugly that like in the middle of this game, they're just getting after um, you know, anybody that's that's trying to to create any yards for this Oklahoma offense. One just quick thought to to add in here a stat that kind of supports us. Second best uh, or sorry, 29th best run defense in the country. They're 24th in team sacks. They're 12th in team tackles for loss. And then the most impressive stat for me, Blake, is they're eighth in third down defense, only allowing 28% going up against an offense that is been quite hapless at trying to throw the football. Well, not only hapless, you talk about third down. Oklahoma's 129th in the country in third down. Yeah. Texas, like you mentioned, is, is, is eighth in third down defense. Look, Joe, here's the thing. The defense statistically for Oklahoma, you got to throw out every stat because they've been on the field more than anybody. You know, you're getting a dogfight with Tulane. Your defense has to bail you out because you had a really bad, uh, what was it, pick six or fumble six, whatever it was, by Jackson Arnold. You had uh, going into Tennessee, you had a backwards pass. I mean, there's so many different things that the defense has had to bail you out of to keep you in football games. Joe, this offense has not been good. I thought they've looked better or looked better with Michael Hawkins because of his ability to run the football and scramble because of how bad that offensive line has been. I will I will say this. In that offensive line, and if you go look at it, it's normally when one chink in the armor that breaks down. It's not like all four of them are hapless and can't do anything, can't block, can't run block, can't pass pro. Joe, what they're going through and the struggles that they've had have really come from not having the cohesiveness as a five unit, okay? It's normally been a chink in the armor of communication and pass pro. It's been a, a lack of communication and how they're sliding. Got one guy going right, one guy going left, and they're bumping into one another. That cannot continue to happen. Joe, they had multiple situations where the right guard and left guard pulled and ran into one another. They have just not had cohesion. But this is not the week that you find yourself on the offensive line. I don't think it's the, the week that you find yourself uh, against a Texas team. Now, what I will say is <clears throat> I'm glad that Arch Manning got some get real live game reps going into this one. I, I'm sure Quinn Ewers is going to play this one. They thought that he was coming back. But, Joe, I mean, he's got, a, he's got an ass strain. And if you talk to anybody, I think it's Dr. Chow talked about it when he's on the Believe uh, Podcast Network a yeah. lot. He said, listen, you're not going to know how he's going to react until he really takes a hit in those ribs. And really, when he takes a hit where he got strained at. So, I, I, I just don't I, – I, I'm tr I, this is what I try to do every single time that we come out here. I try to look at a path for each team to win. And the only way that I can see Oklahoma winning is one of two things. Okay, number one is that they just got to force a lot of turnovers and make Quinn Ewers – play bad or arch play bad arch makes young quarterback mistakes they get short fields and michael hawkins can get going get him in, in manageable situations i think that that's what they got to do they got to play keep away man you got to hold on to the football but i don't know how i really don't know how to hold on to the football but here's what i would say 
when you have a guy that can run and scramble, those guys can keep you in games. Joe, if his first, if I, if I'm his coaches this week, I'm saying, listen, mm-hmm. if your first two reads are not there, go get us positive yardage. Go try to run around and get us because Joe, to his credit, he actually does a very good job of that. That's actually, I mean, I would argue that's why they got back into the Tennessee game. Is that I agree, oh, he's not. And some people might criticize me making this statement, but like sometimes young guys that are really good athletes tend to immediately trigger to like, I'm going to run. He did a really good job of that. And that's a good point in this. Like just, if you don't see anything evade pressure, get out and completely demoralize this defense by getting first downs whenever you can. Bet online remains your top spot for all of your live betting action and contests. NFL, college football, UFC, NHL are all in full swing Bet online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and use promo code Believe. That's B L E A V for fifty percent off your first deposit. That is a fifty percent welcome bonus. Bet online where the game starts. Yeah, I mean, that's listen again. Th- that's their path. They got to con. Um, I-, I hate using the Michigan analogy because Michael Hawkins is better than Alex Orgy or Tuttle or any of those guys. He's yeah. more gifted, and we know that. You got to find ways to get mass big plays. Like if you got one on one with Burks on the outside, you got to throw it to him. Now I know that they've had a lot of injuries and that things have been bad, but look, man, positive yardage. I'm telling Michael Hawkins, man, you got you got to just two reads and you're out of there. But Joe, here's another thing that is not helping him either. They can't run the football. Like they they cannot run the football. I look, they're 100 100th in the country in rushing offense. So it's not like they're giving anything to help this young man either. And and it's brutal for for you know for um. Wait, wait, were you, did you say that about Oklahoma or Texas? Oklahoma, their hundredth in the no, country in rushing offense. Yeah, there, there needs to be some more, more balance. And I think that to talk on what, like, what would be a path for Oklahoma to pull out this upset? Because I mean, this is one thousand percent would be a huge upset. I, I know that they're both ranked, but this would be a massive upset considering the state of these two programs and and the confidence in one being a national title contender. And the other figuring out what the heck's going on for the most part. But they would need to, one, benefit from, say, Quinn Ewers isn't as healthy as, as they would hope. Getting as many turnovers as possible. I know that sounds bread and butter, but Oklahoma has been good at doing that. They've been good at generating sacks. They've been good at generating uh, pressures, turnovers. The pick six that they had against Peyton Thorne completely revived them in that game when everybody thought that it was and over and they like were cooked or, or or arch has not had made had bad decision making right so you can force them into that i i think that if you're venables and you're that defensive coaching staff you need to just send so much pressure you got to take advantage of the front seven that you have you're one of the best teams in team sacks you're fifth in the country in team sacks so far this year Go all out. Try and get in the face of Quinn Ewers. And we know that sometimes Quinn Ewers, he has gotten a lot better and he has been improving, but sometimes he makes some boneheaded mistakes when he's got pressure in his face. Leave everything out on the field, which they're absolutely going to do because this is such a huge rivalry for them. I'm going to ask you this question because I want to give Oklahoma a little bit of credit here before we we, we, we move on here. Let me ask you this. Texas has had moments where they have been struggling to run the football. I mean, like, look at that Michigan. I mean, like, let me say it like this. USC had more uh, success running the football on Michigan than Texas did. I I do wonder if Texas going into this game, like if Oklahoma can just crowd the box, play one-on-one man-on-man coverage, and just stop them running the football and be effective, how does this affect what they're doing? I don't know how much, but I, look, it probably doesn't. But you got to take it away, Joe. I, I mean, again, th- they couldn't get to a five-yard to carry back against Michigan, who had no pulse on offense. I think Hawkins is a little bit better than that. But look, man, do you have a worry about Texas running the football here? 
Uh, uh, admittedly a little bit because to what we've talked about so far this season, the injuries that they suffered early on at running back, they ha haven't played anybody sin really since the um, since the Michigan game. Yeah, I wouldn't count Mississippi State as really much of a tough opponent, but I'd, I'd love to see if they have any pulse. That, I, that really might be something that gets completely taken out of this because Oklahoma's run defense is is so tight it's been so good to this point um i don't think it's enough of a concern that it's going to hurt them but it's something that needs to be rectified that's going to hurt them down the line for sure well if they can't like let's think about this joe and i'm not saying that texas has a soft schedule <clears throat> but i gotta ask us a, a god's honest question is oklahoma a better team than michigan like, are you going into this game a big time rivalry game? Someday? I think they're pretty even. I think they're pretty even. I don't. I, I don't look. I think Jackson Arnold's better than any quarterback that Michigan has. So, like, even yeah. even the guy that's not starting in this, I think they have more weapons. I think they're more. Uh, I mean, Joe, that that it just makes them dangerous just being better at quarterback. So, I, I do. I do wonder if there's holes. Like, look, man, I, I'll just say it, and I, I got roasted about this from Texas fans last year. But what was the big thing that I had against them? Like, hey, man, your secondary is not good. They're blowing coverages. They're making mistakes. Joe, there's not been anybody in their mama that could test them throwing the football. Now, their second in passing yards allowed. Nobody has been able to test their secondary worth of shit. So I'm not saying Michael Hawkins can, but my God, does he have the ability to be the one that can actually somewhat do it? Maybe not so much as a passer, but just stress the defense. I still, I mean, I still keep coming back to this. This Texas secondary is so do. much better than it was last year. And I think that I, they continue to get better. This is not going to be the game, though, that they get necessarily tested. tested. Them. Nobody has yet. And I, I don't know what the health situation is for Oklahoma because we remember going into the Auburn game, they were down like three something receivers. Yeah. Could be, I don't know. I don't know what the. I don't know what the situation is for this game yet because it's Monday. It's a little too early for that. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see.